everybody, this is Jennifer from Fertilump, and this is a tutorial on how to make panniers out of a pillowcase. So here's what you'll need. You'll obviously need a pillowcase. You can use a used one or a new one. I picked this one up for about a dollar at the thrift store. You will also need a sewing machine, and you will need thread to match whatever color your pillowcase is. You'll need scissors and pins and a seam ripper, a tape measure or a ruler. You will need um, an iron and spray starch is completely optional. You will need a form of boning to go into your pocket hoop. There's a variety of things that you can use for boning at the hardware store. I use um, sheets of plastic that are cut to certain widths, but you can also use cable ties or duct ties. You can use wire as long as it's a strong enough gauge to hold a curve. Um, I've even heard of people using um, sticks or twigs. You can use steel boning as well, but you'd have to get that from a specialty costuming shop and that, that's not really readily available and it can be a little more expensive. I do not recommend, however, using the plastic boning that you can find at Joann's. It's actually just way too light. That There's a package of it right there. It's usually called featherweight and it's good for certain kinds of bodices and things, but it won't hold pocket hoops well enough. It'll just, it'll be wonky and it won't hold the shape, so I don't recommend. You will need a safety pin, and it's completely optional if you have a serger to finish your edges, use it. If not, pinking shears, or you can skip either of those, and you'll need a small amount of polyester stuffing. So let's go ahead and get started, and if you get lost, just pause and go back. Okay, so you're going to start with your pillowcase, and as you know, two of the sides are sewn and one is folded, but you're going to use the open area, the one that you would insert your pillow in, and go ahead and cut up the couple inches there, and what you're going to do is cut off that folded over cuff there. On this particular pillowcase, it's a different color, but you might be using a pillowcase that's all one color or one without a design, it doesn't matter, but you can skip using a seam ripper, just go ahead and cut it off with scissors, it's a lot quicker. And go ahead and set that aside, don't throw it away because we are going to come back to it. So what we're going to do is work piece A first, and we're going to go ahead and measure that, and it's going to be 13 and a half to 14 inches in length and 17 inches wide. Now on this particular pillowcase it has a border print, so I kind of want that border to go on the bottom or width wise but if you're just using a solid color it doesn't really matter but what you need to do is just go ahead and roughly cut you don't need to be too exact this isn't you know rocket science but roughly cut two pieces that are 13 to 14 inches tall by 17 inches wide and you just kind of want to clean that up so you need two of those pieces and I call them piece A um, and as you can see, the border there is along the width, so the width would be about 17 inches wide. And this is a, for a pair of pocket hoops, you know, for a, a child or a smaller adult could get away with wearing these. Okay. If you um, prefer to use a rotary cutter and a mat, you could probably make your cuts a little bit close, you know, neater. Um, and as you can see, I didn't iron this. I normally would, but I am going to iron it at the next step, so don't worry too much about the wrinkles. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly even, just roughly those measurements. Um, so here I'm going to go ahead and use the top portion of the pillowcase and go ahead and cut those two smaller pieces, which are piece B. And those are going to be 8 inches high, or in length, and 9 inches wide. So you're going to need two pieces that are 13 to 14 inches tall and 17 inches wide, and two pieces that are 8 inches long and nine inches wide. And you're gonna use that out of your pillowcase and you wanna cut as conservatively, conservatively as possible like I'm laying out because we are gonna use the other pieces of the pillowcase down the road. So here are our total four pieces, two larger and two smaller, A and B, cut to our measurements. And here's our excess scraps and we're just gonna set those aside, we'll use them in a minute. So I went ahead and ironed my pieces and you wanna finish the edges. If you have a serger, you can serge all the way around all four pieces, or if you have pinking shears, um, just you want to keep do something that's going to keep it from fraying. You can also do um, a, you know, a, a small hem all the way around the edges as well. I like to use spray stars. It just kind of, especially with cotton, it just kind of gives it a nice finish. That's totally optional up to you. So then after you have finished the raw edges of all of your pieces, you're going to take the two smaller pieces, your piece B, and at the top and the bottom, you're going to do a narrow hem about a quarter of an inch by just turning that under and stitching that in place. 
Now go in with piece A or your larger pieces. You're going to turn them over right sides down and you're going to create a casing or a larger hem along the bottom edge. And this is, needs to be wide enough to fit whatever you're using for boning to be able to slide in and out of there comfortably without snagging. So if you're using cable ties or something that's much smaller, you won't need to turn it up quite as much. But go ahead and fold that over, stitch it down in place, and you're going to do that on both sides of A, both pieces A, and leave it open on both edges like that, little casing, so that you can feed the boning into those channels. And that's on both pieces A. Now taking your smaller piece, put them right sides together on top of the larger piece, matching the bottoms or where you just did the casing, and take up a narrow stitch along the edge. And just make sure that one of the smaller pieces is on the left and one of them are on the right, um, as you see there. So go ahead and stitch that seam connecting piece A to B. And once you've ironed that flat, go ahead and stitch the upper edge there of piece A to finish off that hem. Now you're going to take one of your set aside pillow pieces and you're going to use that longer length there and you're going to need to cut two additional pieces, one for each piece A, to create another channel for a second piece of boning for each piece A. And again, this needs to be the width to fit your whatever you're using for boning. So if yours is about an inch wide, you need to give yourself about an inch and a half so you can finish the edges and turn that under. And that needs to be the full width of, of piece A is what you're cutting there. And as you see, you need two because you have two pieces A. You can go ahead and serge that or just fold it under. Um, and you don't need to stitch it to itself. You're going to stitch it down to piece A. But again, just showing you with the boning, you need to have it wide enough that it can comfortably fit your boning once the edges are finished. This is where having a serger comes in handy. I was taught to always have the inside of your garments look as neat as the outside, but I realize not everybody has one, so don't worry about it if you don't. You can use just pinking shears or just fold it over, especially if this is for Halloween, something you're wearing once. Don't worry about the fraying. It's not a big deal. But you're going to go ahead and right side down, fold over about a quarter of an inch on each side just to make your little strip there. And if you want to take a shortcut, you can actually use bias tape or twill tape or even ribbon to form your casing, but I like being able to recycle the whole pillowcase and not have to buy anything extra, so that's up to you. So once you have both edges of your trim folded over and ironed, you're going to go ahead and lay it um, wrong side down, so the pretty side is up, on piece A or your bigger piece, and you want the top edge of that trim to line up with the top edge of your smaller piece or piece B, and you want it to run parallel with the width and go ahead and pin that in place and you want to stitch as close to the edge as possible so that your boning can feed in there without getting caught and you want to leave one edge open so that you could feed the boning into the casing and seal up the other edge so it doesn't slide out the other edge so you can go ahead and stitch that you can use a zigzag stitch I just use a straight stitch to stitch it down in place and again you want to be as close to the edge um, as possible so you don't fight your boning getting into the channel so once you have done that, you're going to go ahead and fold over right side inside, so the outside, um, wrong side out, and go ahead and just kind of roughly eyeball um, the top edge of A there, and you just want to finish those few inches um, with a narrow hem. You're not connecting the bottom edge of A to B, just finishing off that little few inches of A just to finish off that hem right there. So you can go ahead to your machine and just stitch those few inches of the top edge of A. And the bottom portion where A connects to B on the other side, you're actually going to do after you've inserted your boning into the channels. But first we have to do um, another step. So we're going to go ahead and finish off that hem as I'm showing you there. And make sure you always back stitch at the beginning and the end of your stitches so that they don't pull out. And there you can see we've only done those few inches. The other one we will finish in a minute. Okay, so your next step is actually with your pretty side down or your right side down, wrong side up, you're going to fold over the top edge of both sides of piece A, and this is going to be to create a casing. And this is for your drawstring to pull through, not for boning, it's for a drawstring. Now if you wanted to, you could gather it or pleat it and end up doing a waistband. But this tutorial, I'm just going to show you a drawstring. 
Um, that way it can grow with your child or fit a various um, amount of people just by being able to draw up the drawstring. So you're just going to fold that over about a, an inch or so um, and then pin that and iron that in place. On both pieces A, you've got the bottom hem that's going to have boning in it, the trim layer that right there in the middle that you're going to put boning in, and then the top one you're going to insert your drawstring in. And make sure that there's an opening on the bottom two to feed the boning in, and there's an opening on both sides of the top so that you could feed the drawstring in. So now we're going to go ahead and cut our boning. Whatever you're going to use for boning, you need to cut it to go in the bottom and the middle channels. And you want to cut it about an inch shorter than the opening there because you don't want it to get in the way of closing that seam. And if you're using something that, um, you know, cable ties or plastic or anything like this, it might have a sharp edge. You want to round that off either with scissors or with some sandpaper or something because you don't want it to be sharp enough, especially wire, to stab through your fabric. If you're using wire, you might want to use some tape, electrical tape or duct tape or something to basically make those edges soft so they won't stab through your fabric. So once you have the edges rounded off and no longer any sharp edges, go ahead and feed them into the channels of both pieces of A. Again, you want to cut them a little bit shorter than the opening so that they don't get in the way of your hem. So there it is with both the bottom and the middle um, inserted with that. And you're not, again, not the top channel that's going to be for your drawstring. So you're only going to have two pieces of boning in each um, piece of A. So you're going to go ahead and pin this shut as you see it snap back because whatever you're using boning wise should have enough tension to create that D shape. So it should give you a little bit of struggle to be able to pin it because you need it to be able to hold that shape. If it doesn't, if it's so wispy that it won't hold that solid D shape, it's not strong enough to use for pocket hoops. So you want to go ahead and pin this and this would basically be closing up your piece A, creating that D shape to the other edge of your smaller piece B. And this should be able to fit under your sewing machine. If you have any struggle because your boning is just too strong, you can close that up by hand. But as you see, I'm able to get it under my machine so it shouldn't be a problem. But make sure when you're stitching that the boning stays clear of your needle because it will break your needle. So that was stitching it um, with the wrong side. So you're basically gonna turn it right side or pretty side out when you're done. So all of your, your seams will be inside. Um, so it's gonna look nice and pretty on the outside. And you might have to struggle to get your boning straight, but that's what it's gonna look like. That is one side of your pocket hoops. And as you see, it kind of looks like a D shape. And you've done the same thing for both pieces. There are both sides of the pocket hoops and you can see they're starting to take shape. Okay, so now I'm going back to the piece of the pillowcase that we cut off first thing, that folded over cuff edge, and mine was pink on this pillowcase. But what you're gonna go ahead and do is open that fold over and then go ahead and press it open. That has a small stain on it, but it's not a big deal. This is basically gonna create our drawstring. And what you need is enough length to go around whoever's gonna wear the pocket hoops waist, plus about, 14 inches or so, so that you can create a bow and have ties. So you might have to cut this length and then do a seam, which is what I did, just so I have enough length there. And this is a piece, it's maybe about two, two and a half inches wide, roughly. Oops, about, yeah, two and a half inches wide. So you're gonna go ahead and fold that over, and that's actually gonna be pretty sides together, so wrong sides out, so you can see where that seam is. So you're just folding this over and pressing it with your iron, and then taking up about, I don't know, half inch seam or so, a quarter inch seam, it's up to you. It's not perfect. Um, you're gonna go ahead and stitch this close. And I just kind of made a point on both of the ends, but you are gonna leave the middle part open for about six or seven inches. And you're leaving that open in the middle so that you can turn this when it's done. And just make sure that you lock your stitches or go back um, at wherever you start and stop stitching. So again, you're gonna come down to a point on both ends of your tie or your drawstring, whatever you wanna call it. So then you can go ahead and trim off that excess just to make turning this a little bit easier. If you have pinking shears, this is a great place to use them. If not regular sizzle, scissors will work. I'm just showing you where we've left that open for a few inches right there in the middle of the strap. So you go ahead and take your scissors and trim off the excess, especially there at the points at the end but make sure that you don't cut too close to your stitching there. 
So you wanna go ahead and turn this right side out. And if you have a little sticker, a chopstick or something like that, it can come in handy for turning that right side out. So um, just go ahead and turn that. And something with not too sharp of a point because you don't wanna stab through the fabric and you more of a dull point. So once you've got that turned right side out, you wanna go ahead and press it. And as you can see here in the center, that's where we left it open, we need to fold in those raw edges. And then once you've got those folded in, you can go ahead and um, iron that so it looks nice and pretty. Now what we're gonna do is take another excess piece of our pillowcase that we haven't used. Um, and this is on a seam or basically, so it looks like it's folded over. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold this right side in so the pretty side is facing each other. And I'm just gonna eyeball and roughly cut a shape I'm gonna call it a whoopee cushion shape. It's just kind of like a little, we're making a bum pad. So you can, if you wanna make a pattern and create it, go ahead. I'm just folding it there so that I can make, you know, have it mirror image itself and just roughly cutting kind of a little rounded shape. But the most important thing is that you come up and you create almost like a little lip there at the top that's just a couple inches wide almost like a water bottle, you know, where it's got like that little lip, like a little jug and then the little lip. That's almost what it looks like there, as you can see. And you've got two of those. And it is seamed at the bottom because that's how the pillowcase was, so I'm just gonna use that as part of my pattern. So you wanna stitch around the edges. I'm actually gonna round this off a little bit more just to create more kind of a bean shape there. So once you get the shape that you like, the next thing you're gonna do it just create a little pleat in one of them, and that's just gonna give it a little bit of curve. You can skip this step if you want, it's not a major deal, but I'm just gonna create a small little pleat, um, just a couple inches long, narrowing down like a little triangle, and go ahead and stitch that on your machine to create that little pleat. So that's what it looks like there. So then once you've created the pleat on one side, you can go ahead and match up and then trim the other piece so that it's the same size um, as the one that's been pleated. Or if you wanna pleat both sides, you certainly can do that, but I kinda of like the curve that it gives to the top of the bum pad. So I'm just trimming that in. And again, this doesn't have to be exact. As you see, I'm not pinning or drawing. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. If you don't wanna do a bum pad, if you just want the, the pocket hoops or panniers on the side, by all means, feel free to skip this step. It actually is probably gonna keep your cost down because you won't have to invest in polyfill. Um, but I'm just giving you the instructions in case you wanna make a little bum pad because it kind of helps lift the skirt in the back too. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch around the sides, leaving that top edge, those couple inches at the top, um, open for turning. So you go ahead and turn that right side out, pretty side out. And this is a lot easier to do when you've got a print. If you've got a solid, obviously, very seldom can you tell if you've got the right side or wrong side unless your fabric has a sheen. Um, but you go ahead and turn that out. And then you're gonna take, excuse me, and the pleat would be your top side, just the top portion of the bump pad. But you're gonna take your polyester stuffing and go ahead and stuff it. And with polyester stuffing, you always wanna spread it with your fingers because it'll cover a lot more area. I actually look out and find bags of polyfill all the time at the thrift store for like 50 cents. So keep your eye out for that. So once you've got your bump pad nice and stuffed, you're gonna go ahead and stitch that top edge closed. And you can do that on your machine or by hand, that's totally up to you. Okay, so once you've got that all closed off, um, you're gonna go ahead back to your little drawstring or strapping piece. And where you left that open in the middle for turning, you're gonna go ahead and insert your bum pad in there, closing up those raw edges. So you wanna go ahead and pin that down. And this needs to be right in the middle of your strap. So measure roughly where the middle is and then pin that in place. Now, if you don't wanna make a bum pad, you can skip this step all entirely and just stitch that opening of the pink strapping closed. So it's just um, you know, a drawstring or a strap. And if you don't wanna make the drawstring at all, you can use a piece of ribbon and not have to do that sewing as well. That's totally up to you. So once I have stitched the little bum pad into place, I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch around the edge of the strapping. So there's the little bum pad. And I'm just gonna show you how it looks by itself 
on my little mini lane, the little lane I use when Lane is sleeping or doesn't want to try things on. Um, so as you see, it just ties in the front, and it just adds a little bit of pad for somebody that needs a little foam pad. Okay, so then what you're going to do is go ahead and take your safety pin and pin it onto the one end, to the pointed end of your <coughs> drawstring or your strap where you just attach the bum pad. And you're going to take one of your pocket hoops with the B side or the flat side facing you and you're going to start at the back and feed that pink strapping or the, what do you want to call it, a drawstring, whatever, and feed that right through that little casing that we stitched along the top edge of piece A and go ahead and pull that through. And you want to take up about a few inches, you know, pull through there. And then go ahead and take off your safety pin and do the exact same thing with the other side. You're going to go ahead and put the safety pin on the other side of the strap and feed it through the other pocket hoop with the flat side facing you or facing the bum pad and the curve going outward over the hips, starting at the back and feeding it through. And this is actually the end. So you have created a pair of pocket hoops with a bum pad on the back out of a pillowcase. And this is what it looks like on the dress form. It's gonna give your costume or cosplay outfit a nice shelf shape like the Skyler Sisters or Dangerous Liaisons, Pirates of the Caribbean, many, many costumes that use this shape. And there they are on lane. As you can see, they're super lightweight and they bounce. And here they are under a couple of the outfits that I've made for and as you can see, if a toddler or preschooler can wear them comfortably without too much protest, you can see they're pretty comfortable and she can run in them and move in them. And they seem to hold the shape really well without adding a lot of bulk, which is nice. So, oh, and P.S., this is all we have left of the pillowcase. So, yay for recycling. Anyway, thank you for sticking with me this long. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions at all, feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. And I'm hoping you're able to use this to make a pair of pocket hoops for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe. Have a great day.